like to invite uh, Mitchell Cooper up to the stage for this speech. Thank you to the chair and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before I begin, what I should perhaps mention uh, the chair neglected uh, to refer to was I am also graduating from law school to be a lawyer. Um, so I am also from the side, as the Open Source Society will perhaps refer to, uh, of the people who, who tend to do quite well out of intellectual property uh, rights and the enforcement of those. So I'm also here in somewhat in a capacity uh, to represent that very necessary evil. But no one finds jokes about lawyers particularly humorous uh, in this crowd, so perhaps I'll move on. Um, Mr. Speaker, uh, what I will address uh, in my, uh, or, or what the negating side of the House will address, or, or split, as it were, uh, is firstly, uh, I'm going to take a look at the context of patents, the contents of this debate, how they operate uh, in New Zealand, uh, how they are used, uh, and the real problem we're discussing. And in doing that, I'll move on to two substantive points. Uh, that's to look at how they do, in fact, incentivise uh, invention, uh, and secondly, uh, how they provide a legitimate commercial choice, or a little legitimate choice uh, for players to protect their intellectual property rights. Secondly, uh, Brett, uh, our second speaker, uh, will turn to look at how important it is for the commercialisation uh, of intellectual property and the commercialisation of ideas. Uh, and of course, that's intrinsically tied to the question of, of investments, uh, of invention. So to ask them the question, uh, what are patents? And perhaps it's, it's helpful, I'm sure everyone has a, a, a basic understanding, but they're about protecting uh, a specific uh, type of invention. So there's, there's different ways we can protect intellectual property rights and patents are a specific limited way of protecting certain types uh, of things. In the New Zealand context there are approximately a thousand New Zealand, uh, New Zealand in New Zealand there are approximately a thousand software patents. Uh, and on this side of the house uh, we accept that broadly uh, yes there are some problems with software patents uh, with the patent system generally, pardon me, uh, and we accept also that in terms of harmonisation across different jurisdictions, there's, there's some problems with patents. But altogether, uh, we would submit on this side of the house that ultimately uh, it's a system uh, that works reasonably effectively uh, and that picking software patents as a particular mechanism uh, to attack patents generally uh, is not justified uh, and is in fact uh, the incorrect approach. So we would submit instead uh, that there, there are legitimate uh, and active imposition uh, by the government in incentivising innovation. We would refer more generally with respect to patents. The United States, for example, uh, in the early 90s, uh, when they extended their patent regime to cover uh, circuit boards and things like that, which assisted in a booming of a semiconductor industry in the United States that was necessary, uh, Congress determined, to protect that sort of innovation uh, by applying clear patent rights to that, an area that, that wasn't clearly satisfied initially. Uh, we would also note very quickly uh, on this issue of context that companies such as Microsoft uh, don't just hold all of the patents. Uh, they don't hoard them together and they're not making all their money uh, out of patents. And in fact, it's a very commercial uh, relationship. It's something that happens in flux. And that com big companies like Microsoft, like IBM, often will have a 10 to 1 ratio of the, the, uh, the patents that they hold uh, against those that they license from other parties. Um, so what's important to note about software patents uh, is that in fact they're able to be negotiated and traded and there's a market for those. And I'll leave the more substantive analysis of this to my second speaker. Um, but essentially software patents act to allow people uh, to realise value uh, for products. So the status quo as it sounds uh, works effectively. And with the greatest respect to Mr Harrison, we think on this side of the house uh, that he misunderstands the difference between plots and books uh, and software. And we would say in the context uh, of software, uh, in the context of books, that copyright uh, is sufficient to protect books and it's used regularly uh, to enforce uh, the rights of books. You can't pirate books, um, you can't just run them off the printer yourself and that's sufficient to protect books. But in the context of certain software innovation, it's something which can only be protected through a patent mechanism. So if I invent a new and more efficient way of perhaps managing a database so it's done more efficiently, or perhaps even software to make the rinse cycle uh, of a dishwasher uh, more efficient, that if I 
implement that, of course, exclusively in hardware, then that's something I can protect through a pattern. But under their model, if I imp implement it in a mechanism uh, such as software, it's something I can't protect. And we would submit on this side of the house that, in fact, it's important to be able to protect that kind of software. And indeed, there was some recognition, of course, by the Select Committee in New Zealand debate over this uh, with a question around embedded software. Um, so perhaps that aligns too. Um, but we would say, on this side of the house, that uh, that, that distinction between books uh, and software to suggest uh, that if we had patents for books, that we wouldn't have any books um, other than the one patent holder who got to sit there happily writing his own books and not letting anyone else write books. Um, that, that simply hasn't played out in the context of software. And in fact, as I'll move on to now, that the use of patents uh, in fact incentivizes uh, in invention. And there are two reasons for this. The first reason is that the patent system provides moral recognition and that my name goes on the patent. So if I invent something, there's a formal mechanism uh, for recognizing my invention. And we accept that to a certain degree, of course, this happens in an open source model, but we would submit that there's a tip here in terms of moral recognition uh, for invention through the patent system. Secondly, though, we would say it makes an idea possibly an asset, that the only question then becomes, is this invention or this new software model, as it were, um, useful? Um, and in that, it generates uh, essentially a market economy for patents. And we've discussed how players in the industry uh, are able to trade and license patents. We would submit uh, this does a lot to undermine the approach in the, the affirmative side of the house that says it stifles innovation, that the Android phone is being hammered and made impossible. But the reality is, is that people, uh, parties small and large, are able to license these products, uh, license these patents, and use them. And more importantly, through a licensing product, when you're able to patent and protect something, you're able to share it through the patent system. If we do not have software patents, uh, and you cannot effectively protect all of these things uh, through copyright, uh, the issue becomes that parties are left simply uh, to protect their products through trade secrets and through keeping them to themselves. And that with a patent system, you're able to have an open discussion, you're able to license, and you're able to develop uh, innovation. And so finally, uh, we say it's a final, at least final choice, uh, and it's a legitimate business choice, it's a legitimate uh, part of the toolkit for, young, for businesses starting up to be able to protect their IP rights in this matter. And that if you take it out, uh, you leave a hole. So to summarise, we would say, in the context of New Zealand, um, software patents uh, work effectively as it stands. They provide an incentive to invest, and they're a legitimate choice uh, 